What's shaking, ladies? I got into a wreck last week. So, I got that going on in my eye. So, that's been fun. We officially have 12.2 hours on the bike. This bike's still been a lot of work for me. Still taking a lot of time to get dialed in. Finally got the suspension, all that done. And I already somehow seem to burn through the brake pads, but it's weird because I really haven't been using my brakes. I've been using trees to slow down, which is what this is from. So I might make another video about that. Uh, the rear shock feels good. Front forks are feeling good, uh, but it still pops a little bit and doesn't run as smoothly as it should. So it's time to shim the valves. I'm not a mechanic, so I'm not gonna explain to you guys uh, the importance of shimming valves and all of that because I'm not even a certified mechanic. I'm just winging it, honestly. So uh, as long as you got a manual and you like taking things apart and are smart enough to know how to put it back together, then you should be able to do this. And if not, just watch this whole video and uh, you can mess it up like I do. Step uno of shimming your valves. So I like to use a drill taking things out. It's a hell of a lot faster. Um, sometimes it's good to be faster, other times it's not. But in the case for motorcycles, you usually want to be faster. So, lock one out. I know where all my bolts go. I've taken this apart a thousand times, put it back together. It's given me a headache, but I can now do this with my eyes closed in the middle of a rainstorm. So those bolts I just took out, there's one here at the base and then one here at the very top. Uh, I put a little bit of lubricant on the hose here because it makes it easy when you untwist the gas cap, it doesn't twist. Okay, yeah, it's supposed to do its job. So I just put a little bit of uh, assembly lube on there. It's supposed to slide around, make it easy getting on and off, so. That's all the steps to get the plastic off, but before you take it off, remember, what the hell's in here? Not water, gas. So you don't want to be spilling it everywhere. So make sure your gas is shut off, and then find the hose, and you want to pull that out so it's not going everywhere. You can get something to catch this. It's not much gas that comes out, so I just leave it usually. Be slow and gentle. See, a little squirt. And then I, all right, a little bit more gas came out. I like to turn that down to make sure nothing gets in it. You don't have to, that's just what I do. Right, now the gas tank is freed up. Take that off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the bike so we can see this better. Oh, shit. <laughs> all right, so we wanna take the engine mounts off. And then you get an extender because sometimes you it's just not long enough. And that's the, what you have to do. And bingo was his name, oh. Move on to the next. Pop it loose. And where's your mama? Where's your daddy? That one I'm gonna want it a little bit longer. Come on. You don't need this anymore. If you do, you have the hands of somebody with weak hands. All right, it's kind of dirty in there right now, so I'm gonna get some contact cleaner and clean it out. This stuff works on everything. Sometimes if I forget to shower, spray some mess on, I can get another good week out of it. This stuff is good for removing oil, grease, other contaminants. It also works as a good non-degreaser cologne. And sometimes you can use this for putting in contacts if you don't have any saline solution. Uh, when doctors, before they go in to do surgery, this is what they use to spray down. Uh, this stuff's been used for everything. I've heard if you get chlamydia, like it wasn't even there, take out the spark plug. Flip that out the way. All right, now that the plastics and gas tanks, plastic and gas tank, is off we can get this part off so first remove the hose if you pull on something and say open sesame and it doesn't come off probably means there's screws holding it down so now you got to find where those are at and take them out screws now we can take the top portion off open sesame 
Alright, I guess it wanted to come out backwards. Now that the top of it's off, you want to make sure it's at top dead center. So what you want to do is get a big screwdriver and take this top part off. There's an O-ring on it, so be careful when taking it off. Oh. Or don't be, just, you just take it off, I guess. But there's a little line, little notch in the stator. You gotta rotate it around. Um, but I also know my bike pretty damn well. So I know when the marks are right there, that's TDC. So for TDC, you're gonna have a dot here that needs to be like parallel with the top of the head. There's another one over here. And then these little dots up here need to be straight up. And then there's another mark on the inside of that hole. If you have a light you shine in there, it's gonna be lined up with these notches right there on the outside. So once you get that off, you're gonna wanna check the valve clearances. And to do that, you get some feeler gauges and you make some jokes about feeling things and you have a gauge for it. Um, and then you're gonna wanna slip them in the slots with the cams and then get some measurements. So I've already went ahead and got all the measurements uh, from mine. Uh, and so the measurement it's supposed to be is for the intake, it's supposed to be 0.1 to 0.15 uh, and exhaust is 0.17 to 0.22. Um, so the intake, uh, I could get away with that. I might go ahead and lower that other one right here just so that they're all the same, all 0.1. Um, and the way I like to measure it is I like to start with the bigger uh, feeler gauges and then work my way down. And the first one that slides in smoothly, that's the measurement you take. So I might go ahead and bump that one down. And then the exhaust, uh, I'm definitely gonna have to fix both of those. And that would also explain why it was running bad and popping a lot. So hopefully we get that fixed up and the bike runs smoothly. We've taken our measurements. We need to get the cams out of here. And to do that, the first step is to get the chain loose and get that out of the way. So I went ahead and made a little hook bracket here to hold it out of the way for me. Once I break it loose, so I have a little hole here in the frame. Slide that sucker through and then hook the cam chain on. And then to loosen it, the cam chain tensioner is right here. You're gonna take this back bolt out first. There's a little screw, unscrew it out, and then uh, there's just a bolt on either side. All right, so it looks like to get to the cam chain tensioner, um, the carburetor's in the way. I could loosen some things up and try to like move it, but I'm just gonna go ahead and make it easy on myself and just go ahead and take the, the subframe off. So now that the carb's out of the way, we can get to the chain tensioner. Mine's a 10 for the end here, could be different. There's a little, little flat head in there you gotta take out. We have to take it out, just loosen it up, and then it'll loosen the chain. All right, you wanna rotate it this way. You actually spin it in, and that loosens the chain. And then if you spin it out, it starts tightening it. So all the way in. Then you got two eight mils to take off. And there's your cam chain tensioner right there. To take out the cams, so you want to go ahead and take all those bolts out and do them in a crisscross pattern because it does affect it if you take one out completely loose and the others are all torqued down. You want to take out the cam buckets and the shims are directly below that. So you want to use a good magnet um, and go ahead and get those out the way. If you do it right, the shim should be right on the bottom. Once you get the buckets out, the shims are already inside. This is what they look like. Just literally a small, small little disc. And you wanna keep those organized where they came from. And then I have another one to set them on. And so now you're gonna wanna measure them with calipers. All right, then you gotta do a little bit of math, figure out what you need. All right, now it's just a game of finding which one is correct out of the shims. Boom. Now just reinstall everything and you're good to go. So that's it as far as uh, checking your valve clearances and then adjusting your shims. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.